Hi everyone, my name's Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos about knitting and yarn related things. So if that's interesting to you, feel free to subscribe, check out my channel, check out my Instagram, which is at Jamie underscore creates. And my TikTok is also the same. I just make lots of knitting content. So if you're into that stuff, feel free to stick around. I'd love to have you here. So I was going to film a knitting podcast for this week because it's been around a month since my last one, which is generally the time I like to take between podcasts just to keep things kind of consistent and to leave enough time usually to build up, you know, enough kind of whips and FO progress to make the podcast long and interesting. <laughs> Otherwise it would be pretty repetitive. This month particularly has been quite interesting and very busy. I have been doing a lot of knitting, but a lot of that has been for things that I'm just not allowed to show at the moment. So I have made like some progress on some of my other whips, less progress on some of them, no progress on some of them. I did make an entire Josephine vest, but I've shown that a lot on my Instagram and I just don't think I can make a whole video about one project um, and all the other FOs that I've done, I just can't show at the moment. I will be able to show them at some point, but just right now I'm not allowed to because they're not for me, they're for another brand that I'm working for and they haven't been released yet. So I'm not allowed to show them yet, they're still in development. So yeah, that's kind of a, a bit of a trade-off at the moment. Um, less things I can show you, but I'm still knitting a lot. So that's good. But yeah, I think I'm just going to hold off a little bit longer on doing a podcast because very soon there'll be just like so much that I can tell you about and I'll have a lot of content. But just right now, I think I just need to hold off on the podcast, which is fine. So instead of a podcast, I thought it would be really fun to do a knitting pattern recommendations video. It actually never occurred to me to do this kind of video before. I don't know why, because I watch them. I've seen other people do them. I think they're super helpful super cool and it's a great way to kind of share the love and you know promote other designers i mean i feel like i talk a lot about other designers and other patterns you know in my podcasts and and such like when i'm knitting those designs but i feel like especially this year i'm probably not going to be able to do as much knitting of other people's patterns and testing of other people's patterns at least in the next like six months or so so i think this is like a really great way to kind of still be able to do that and also just like talk about pieces that like I haven't made from designers that I love and give you guys inspiration. I don't know. I just don't know why I've never thought to do it before, but I'm really happy that I did think of it. Um, my friend Anna made one of those videos this past week and I was like, really good idea. So thank you Anna for the, for the idea. So a lot of the time when people do these videos, there's like an overarching theme. Maybe it's like a season or a type of garment etc because I'm in Australia. I'm not going to do, I'm never going to do season things like, it's pretty rare that you'll see that I'm like catering my designs to a specific season like and releasing them at a specific time just because I'm in a completely different season to the other half of the world and I don't think that we should be just like assuming that everyone is like wanting to do the same patterns at the same time. So this is going to be a whole big mix of different garments for all different types of weather because also like it could be really freezing cold for winter in one country and then like mildly cold for winter in another country. Like it's not always the same. Everyone lives in different climates. And so not everything's going to be suitable for everyone, but I think that I've got a pretty good mix of patterns here. I feel like probably more of them are more kind of winter vibe, like autumn winter, because that's just like knitting. And I feel like that's pretty standard. But the main kind of overarching encompassing I guess theme for this video is going to be that these are all small designers so I'm not going to be recommending you any my favorite things knitwear petite knit patterns pearl soho whatever like I'm not I think they get enough airtime <laughs> and I think that there are so many incredible talented brilliant just unbelievable honestly unbelievable knitwear designers who either maybe don't have as much of a following or even if they do have a bit of a following. Yeah, I think obviously there are some designers in here flag that like are quite big, but I would say on the spectrum of like how big they are in comparison to like 
putting like petite knit as like the benchmark for like a big designer I wouldn't say any of these people would fall into this category into that category so yeah like I consider myself a small designer um so I think yeah it's really good to share the love around because they deserve it so much and I'm so inspired by pretty much by everyone on this list of patterns that I've come up with I will say that I think almost all if not all and maybe there might be like one or two on here I have followed a pattern from I would say almost all of these designers not necessarily the exact pattern that I'm showing but I am familiar with their pattern writing style and I think that that's also really important because a lot of the time in these videos like I feel like people might be recommending patterns from designers they've never actually knitted themselves does that make sense like they've never followed any of their patterns before they've just seen the actual design and I think there's a big difference between seeing a photo of a design and actually seeing a pattern for, for a design and, and following a pattern because a design could look really great but then the pattern is like not very good <laughs> you know so I can definitely vouch for like almost all of these and the ones that I haven't done I have heard great things these are all really really great pattern writers so with that being said we're gonna get started we're gonna start off with one I actually haven't knitted any of her patterns and it's because they all look like they're gonna take me way too long and I just it's overwhelming at the thought, but she is so incredibly talented and I'm just so in awe of her and so inspired by her. First one is the Aosta cardigan. I think that's how you say it. Aosta? A Aosta? Yeah, I think that has to be how you say it. By Sophie from The Knit Pearl Girl. She is unbelievable. This cardigan is stunning. I'm obsessed with the stitch. She also does have like a children's version and a baby version and a whole lot of different other adaptations of this design. Like there's a jumper version, all sorts of different versions, but this Aosta cardigan I just think is chef's kiss. I love that it's a raglan cardigan. I have been meaning to make one of those because I don't know if I ever have actually done a raglan cardigan. Like maybe I've done one for a baby, but I don't think I've ever done one for myself. So that's gonna be on the list of things to do and maybe I'll do it with this cardigan. But I just think it is so beautiful. The balloon sleeves, beautiful. The, like the, the texture of that stitch, I just think it's so subtle and simple, but it's so effective. And when you look at it, it's just like, it's eye catching. And I just, I think this design is absolutely beautiful. So that is first on my recommendations list. Okay, next up is a pattern that I believe is being released tomorrow when I'm filming this. So it should be out by the time this goes up. So go check it out, go get it, it's brand new. That is the Lieblings Jumper by Andrea from Oops and Loops. This is such a gorgeous cardigan. It's got a big open neck, which I think is super, super nice and like comfy and slouchy, cozy vibes. I love the different textures and the color work used. I think this just is an amazing, amazing pattern. The big, like, wide sleeves, like the big, like, I don't know, you can see how long the, like, not how long, how wide the cuff, the sleeve cuff is. And like, I just think it's like ultimate at home, cozy vibes. But then I feel like you can also dress it up. And yeah, it's just a really gorgeous design and I've knitted a couple of patterns from Andrea and they are very, very well written, very detailed, so size inclusive, just so thorough and yeah, very inspiring. And she's also just a very, very lovely person. And yeah, I'm so like lucky to have connected with her through Instagram. She gave me so many like side notes. She, like when I went to Valencia, which is where she lives now, she uh, wasn't living there at the time. So we weren't able to meet, but she gave me so many recommendations of things to do and places to go there. And like, couldn't be more grateful. And she's just the sweetest ever. So if you're not already following her on Instagram, you definitely should be because she's just the loveliest. Okay, I have two patterns from this next designer because I just couldn't pick one. Like there was too many to choose from. So I've chosen two very different patterns, um, but they are both from Robin from Renewal Collective, who is a, once again, brilliant, brilliant pattern designer. Every single time she comes out with a new design, which it has been a while, but every single de design that she's released, I just see it and I'm like, oh, how? How do you do that? Like, I genuinely am like, how? Um, so I have two from her. I actually haven't made either of these, but they are very much both um, on my list that I will hopefully get to at some point. So the first one is the Alfama jumper. No, the Alfama sweater, 
which is so beautiful. It's this chunky cable knit. It's like long, but it's got, it's got like a beautiful like Aran style cable pattern on the front and on the sleeves and it's just gorgeous. I I need to make it. I just haven't done it. I don't think I've ever done a cable like that before. So it's really very much high on my list. I just haven't got there yet. But if you want to learn some new cable techniques and kind of learn a lot of new stitches or new techniques in one design, like just all in the one pattern, like this is a perfect one for you. I think Arrow Knitting will never go out of style. It's so classic. It's just timeless and this pattern is no exception. Okay, the next one is a summer pattern. So that's exciting if you are in the Northern Hemisphere and potentially going into some warmer weather. This is the Cypress Top, also by Robin. And it is a gorgeous off the shoulder, kind of like, oh my God, like cinched ruffle. I don't even know how to explain it, but like cinched ruffle, gorgeous, gorgeous top. and. I was so close to making this last year when I was in Europe and I was like deciding what patterns to make. I ended up opting for a different one of her patterns. I got the Aran Crop, which I also recommend, but can't do everything in this video. And I think I didn't get this one just because I prefer to wear a bra and it's off the shoulder. So not the vibe for me in terms of uh, practicality, but if you're someone who either just like loves to go braless or doesn't mind a good strapless bra or also doesn't care if your bra strap show because who cares really, I, I really shouldn't care. This is a perfect, perfect top. It's also like grateful like kind of when you're going out, you know, like nighttime vibes, dress it up. I love the, I, like the ruffle kind of like, I can't even, I don't even know if I'm using the right word to describe it, but it is perfection. And she's just so clever and creative. And yeah, it's just a great, it just is a great summer pattern. Okay, next up we have the Tilly Bomber by Becca from Knit Stitch Repeat. And this is just colorful heaven. I absolutely love this design. I love the little texture detailing throughout, but also the amazing color work. It's a great scrap project, of course, because there's lots of different strands held together, which means you can just use up your leftovers to create a colorful masterpiece and that is very much apparent in most if not all of Becca's beautiful designs and yeah I'm just such a big fan she's also the sweetest the most loveliest person and I am also so grateful to have connected with her um, through Instagram honestly probably pretty much all of these people I've connected with through Instagram um, and it's just amazing to speak just like to be able to meet so many amazing designers and Becca is no exception. She is just so talented and I just love all the colors that she uses. And I think this is a great pattern for putting all those colors together that you've used in all your different projects and then creating one big rainbow masterpiece. <laughs> okay, it wouldn't be, I've given Kara enough airtime, but um, I will continue to do so because she's amazing. And um, she has well over a hundred patterns, I would say by now. I haven't gone and counted, but I would assume it's well over a hundred at this point. And that isn't because she's been doing this for like years and years and years. It's just because she's a freak and releases like so many patterns at once every time she really does a release. And so her collection has built up and there are so many patterns to choose from. So it's actually very, very hard just to pick even two. Um, and there are probably so many others that I could recommend, um, but I have made a lot of her patterns, so I feel like I have talked about them a lot, um, the ones that I've made. So these are two that I haven't made, but really like, and would really like to make at some point, but honestly, like, I could probably do an entire video recommending just Cara patterns, because there's so many. So the first one I'm gonna recommend is a pretty new pattern, like relatively new. I think it was probably only released in the last couple of months. And it's called the Enoki Sweater. And it's a chunky pattern. I think she has a bulky weight version with like a similar design as well. And it is so, so beautiful. I just think that this like texture that she's got going on at the front is just stunning and so interesting. And I have no idea how she's done it. And I, I obviously would figure that out by following the pattern. But yeah, I just think it's so unique and just interesting and yeah I just think she's always 
coming up with, you know, these new ways to use different stitches and to incorporate different stitches into her designs and this, once again, no exception. It just like looks like a beautiful bouquet of flowers, like on a jumper. That's how I see it. Yeah, I think she did it like, isn't it enoki mushrooms? Because it looks like mushrooms. I don't know, but <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's stunning, all of the above. This is the Williamsburg cardigan. Now she also has a Williamsburg sweater and she's got a bulky weight version for both the cardigan and the sweater. I think she also has a top as well. So yeah, there's a whole Williamsburg series. I've made the jumper, very, very good pattern. I think that was the first time I did cables with chunky yarn um, and never looked back. <laughs> but yeah, this is the cardigan version. And I think it is so, so, so cute. Just like staple, you know, staple cable cardigan. Like you can't go wrong. The colors she's used is absolutely beautiful for this one. Just like side note, um, I just am obsessed with it. and. <laughs> It just looks so good. From my experience of doing the sweater version, it's a really great pattern if you're still quite new to cables, which I think I was at the time. I'd only been using cables for a couple months and yeah, I think I was pretty new. So I learned a lot and yeah, I would highly recommend it. I think she also has a tutorial for the jumper on her YouTube. Um, not the cardigan, I assume, but if the jumper's anything to go by, the cardigan would be a great, great pattern. Okay, the next one is the windowpane sweater by Dear Knitwear. I have made the vest version, but the jumper version is to die for, and I probably should make it as well when I get the time. <laughs> but I think this design is just so clever. It's so simple, but so effective. I think it is very, very well done. I love the turtleneck. I in the vest version i found it really cool that and i assume it's the same with the jumper that you use like a duplicate stitch for the horizontal lines um and then obviously you use like intarsia or like fair isle whatever um for the vertical stripes but yeah this pattern is super like elegant 10 out of 10 absolutely love it next up is a shorts pattern so once again a summer knit and these are by Phoebe from Friday Knits. So these are the Lost Shorts. And I am so tempted to make these, but the thought of doing like a ribbed short in like, I assume fingering weight yarn, it's kind of scaring me. Um, I might have to wait till like next summer, you know? But I just know I'd wear them so much because like I wear my like knitted bike shorts, like not my knitted, my normal, like my bike shorts, like all the time. And so this would just be like a knit version of that. Um, and I think that they are so pretty and she is just such an incredible designer. Phoebe's also one of my friends, she's from Melbourne and she is honestly like so clever and I'm so inspired by her. Her designs are immaculate. I've made quite a few of her patterns and they're just really, really beautiful. And she's just a genius in my opinion. And the fact that she like, was able to kind of just do this beautiful shorts pattern amazing and there's also a tank version that goes with these shorts and I think a camisole is also in the works or maybe it's already come out I can't keep up but yeah the shorts just really caught my eye and if you're looking for a shorts pattern I think this is it <laughs> okay so I obviously had to include a pattern by Charlie from the knit edit because of course, she's an icon. I've decided to include the Jasper jumper because it is probably one of my favorites from her. Everything she releases is brilliant, but this is a top, basically a top down version of her satin jumper, which is like her most iconic pattern that I, if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you were doing in 2020, but you can use up all your scraps and there's so many different ways to use her color changing technique and if you've never done a top down raglan jumper she's done a full hour long tutorial for it which is a sleigh and um yeah i think this is a really great pattern for beginners and a really great stash buster and charlie's patterns are amazing she's an incredibly talented designer 
very experienced, also just very, very funny person. And if you don't follow her and you haven't seen her memes, you're missing out because it is quality content. And yeah, I just also, Charlie's a great friend and someone who I really looked up to when I first started you know, properly getting into knitting and now she's a friend, so that's really cool. I really need to make this because Charlie's patterns are like, I, satin jumper was one of my first like colorful knits that I ever made. Before that I was making pretty boring things. But if you were looking to do a stash busting project and you didn't want to do a cardigan like the other one that I showed, this is definitely one that I can recommend. Okay, I'm really excited to recommend this pattern because I think it's quite like specifically trendy right now, even though this pattern came out a while ago. So this is by Brenda, Beatific Brenda. I never know if I'm saying that right, if it's Beatific or Beatific. It's not a word I've ever heard before <laughs> or ever heard someone say out loud. So I don't know, um, but yeah, if you follow Brenda, you know I'm talking about. Um, and this is the marshmallow cardigan and it might look so, like something you've seen recently because you may have seen that Ariana Grande was wearing a very similar cardigan that um, I will say that that cardigan that she was wearing is from a knitwear brand called Mum's Handmade. I know her Mum's Handmade don't sell patterns for this. Brenda's had this pattern out for a while. I think it probably came out last year, if not potentially even the year before. Um, I had got to go back and check but yeah I saw Ariana's cardigan and I was like immediately thought of this pattern and I was like oh my god like amazing the name the marshmallow cardigan is just perfect so cozy it's got a hood it's super chunky it's like using a fisherman's rib I assume and it would literally be like wearing a blanket and I know a lot of people have been wanting to make a version of the cardigan that Ariana Grande wore and look no further than this pattern because it's been there. You've been able to do it. So if you didn't know, you can do it. Yeah, Brenda is a great pattern writer. Her patterns are really fun and she's got a great sense of humor as well. And I that like comes through in her patterns. I adore this one. I was so tempted to make it when it first came out, but like I just cannot, like the, I just have too many chunky knits and like this would literally explode out of my closet, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to recommend it to you. <laughs> Next up is the Wavy Daisy sweater by Mia from Anxious Girl Knits. And this one, I believe, came out pretty recently. And I am in love. The second I saw this on my feed, I was like, holy moly, that is amazing. Such fun color work. Such a fun pattern. I just think it's beautiful. I think it's so cool. I think it's just... Fun, that's the only word I can think of. It's just fun and it's so cute. I assume it's all intarsia. You've got the wavy lines, but then you've also got the big flower and it's just like so many different color combinations that you can do and I just love it. And I just, oh my God, I just wish I could make all these patterns, but I just, I literally just can't. <laughs> but yeah, if you were wanting to try out some fun color work, I would say this is the way to go, especially because it's chunky, so it'll work up quickly and you'll be able to see your progress really fast. And yeah, I'm obsessed. I have another cable design. This one is from Joanne, from Knitwear by Joanne. And she actually has a book coming out with all cable pieces, like all cable jumpers, cardigans, tops, vests, whatever. That's coming out later in the year, but that doesn't surprise me at all that she's doing a cable book because her cable patterns are unbelievable. This is the Arrakis pullover. I think I've said that right. It's stunning. Like so much detail, so much happening here. It's similar to the Alfama sw sweater in, in terms of like that center, uh, like cable detail with the like trying not diamonds and everything going on there but like there's so much else happening in this pattern and I just think she is so clever and once again if you're wanting to try cable patterns maybe a little bit more on the advanced side of things this is definitely one I would recommend it is stunning and if this one isn't for you check out her other patterns I'm sure you'll find one <laughs> okay so this one is by 
another Cara. This is by Art by Cara Lees and it's the Basic Open Knit, I think is what it's called. And it is a super, super cool mesh. Literally what it says, like open, like big needles, but thinner yarn. Just, I think it is so sick. I think there's so much you can do with it. I think it's awesome that she's used a lot of variegated yarn in a lot of the ones she's made, but you could also do it in a solid color. You could do stripes. You could do so much with this because it is just stuck in there, but it's got a lot of texture still and a lot of potential to kind of like explore and experiment. I really think I need to make one of these. I just need to find the right yarn that I'd want to use for it, but I think it would be such a cool layering piece to have and I don't really feel like I have anything like that in my wardrobe. So yeah, I need to figure out maybe to use like a hand dyed yarn or something because I think that would look sick. Yeah, it's just really different to a lot of like knit patterns that you'll see. It's very, it's very cool. Like it's the only kind of word I can think of. It's like cool and like trendy, but like different, but like edgy. I don't know. I'm like struggling to find the words, but I think like you can kind of get what I mean. And I love that. And I think Kara is amazing. She makes incredible pieces, incredible designs, incredible patterns, great content as well. And she deserves all the love. So would highly recommend that. And that one is definitely on my list of, of things I want to make at some point. Okay, last but not least, I am going to recommend one of my own patterns because shameless plug. And that is the one that I'm wearing right now, which is the Happy Hour Top. And all I'll say is that the stitch pattern is addictive. It is so fun. And I've done, I've used like a hand dyed variegated yarn here, but it looks just as good in a solid color. There's so many different yarn options that I've put on the pattern. So you can figure out if you want to use a bulky weight or more lightweight yarn. And there's also a chunky version and a jumper version <laughs> if you want. And I'm working on the cardigan, cardigan version, even though I've been working on that since September and it's still not done, but you know, we'll get there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna link all of the patterns, of course, that I've recommended in the description. So if you want to check any of them out, be sure to do so. I'll try to link everyone's Instagram as well in the description so you can just go give everyone a follow if you're not already. And let me know if you decide to make any of these. Let me know which one's your favorite. And that's pretty much it. I think that's all I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed those recommendations. I definitely enjoyed kind of scouring my feed and my, my lists that I've made to curate this list and I really hope it's brought some inspiration to you because it's definitely brought some inspiration to me and yeah I think that's all hopefully I'll have a podcast next week but I might not I don't know how long it's going to be until the next one um so we'll see I don't know if I'm going to do a video next week it'll just depend on if I have an idea or not that's not a podcast um so not sure but Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is. Bye.